Distress Signal, written by the Billy Truck. Edward has run his branch line for many years. However, there was a time long before Edward when it wasn't a branch line. It was a railway of all of its own called the Wellsworth and Sudbury. It was a humble line situated by the coast. If you lived near the railway, you hear the sounds of two twin tank engines puffing up and down the line. They had six wheels, tall chimneys, square saddle tanks, and open-sided cabs. One was named Walter, and the other Winifred, though she preferred Winnie. Walter, on the other hand, fancied his name just as it was. They scurried ditfully along the lines of their wagons, always whistling to nearby folk. They were fond of each other, but like all siblings, were prone to bickering. One morning, the engines were greeted by Mr. Catherick, the manager. Beside him was a post with a red and white plank jutting at the top. It loomed high above the little engines. Is that the new weather rave, sir? asked Winnie. It looks grand. <laughs> it looks like an eyesore, muttered Walter. You're an eyesore, Winnie hissed. This, my dear engines, Mr. Catherick announced, is a signal. We'll soon be carrying passengers and must ensure proper conditions of trains. It shall be stationed down the line. But first, a demonstration. Now at the top is the signal's arm, and it will show you how to proceed. Oh, you can't talk like driver. Walter huffed to himself. When the arm sticks out like this, Mr. Cather continued, pointing up, it means danger. You are to go no further. Taking orders from a plank of wood. <laughs> Walter scoffed. Shh! When he scolded. This is important. We'll now show you what a caution signal looks like. Mr. Jones, if you please, Mr. Cather called. Nothing happened. Mr. Jones, if you'd please, he called insistently. Sorry, sir, came a bumbling voice, and the arm fell silently. Excellent, Mr. Catherick smiled. Finally, the signal for a line clear. Mr. Jones, he called. Nothing happened. Jones, you... He stopped, clearing his throat. This shall take a bit of a moment, he smiled at the engines, before storming off towards his unseen coordinate. Phew, what a joke, Walter grumbled. Why bother with all of this? It's for the sake of our passengers, Winnie replied. Huh, <laughs> Walter snorted. Driver kept me safe from the start. I'll put my faith into him. With that, Walter began daydreaming, unconcerned with the line clear signal looked like. He was still quite unbothered the next morning, as he strolled along with his wagons. Silly thing, silly thing, he muttered. Imagine being ordered about by an overgrown matchstick. Wouldn't catch me altering to... He paused as the signal came into view. There was a great commotion as Walter screeched to a halt, staring up at it. Oh, 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 cried the wagons. Something wrong, boy? asked the driver, upon regaining his balance. Something is wrong because something is missing. The driver followed Walter's gaze indeed. There was a definite lack of something when there should have been a signal arm. Where is that big red blumbish? Walter grumbled. Perhaps it's down for maintenance, reasoned the driver. Or perhaps it's not set up yet. In any case... I'm sure we're safe to... Oh, no, Walter interrupted. I don't trust a thing without this horrid invention. Walter, be reasonable. Mr. Catherick said this signal arm would show us when to go. But how can I know that if the arm has legs and gone for a walk? The driver's attempt to reason with Walter quickly dissolved into bickering. The fireman hadn't had the energy to join in and began reorganizing coal in the bunker. 
They were so busy quarreling, they didn't realize they had company. <coughs> Everyone jumped. There was Winnie, stopped on the other side of the signal. If you're quite done resting, my train is due. I'm not resting, retorted Walter. I'm being safe. There's no arm, so I'm not moving. Winnie gazed at the signal. If you ever come so slightly forward, you'll find that the arm is here, staring right at me. Cautiously, Walter drew level with the post. Above him was the signal arm, pointing straight at the ground. Well, that's the silliest thing I've ever seen, he fumed. How could it tell me to go if it's hiding? It's not hiding, Winnie retorted. That means lying clear. Well, well, Walter blushed. How was I supposed to know that? If you've been paying attention, came a voice, you would have. Mr. Catherick stepped down from Winnie's cab. It seems Mr. Jones' distraction rubbed off on you, Walter, he continued. You may be resistant to change, but that's no excuse for ignorance. If you are to run on this railway, you must know how things work. Understood? Yes, sir, Walter sighed. Sorry, sir. I'll concede, continued Mr. Catherick, that perhaps clearer signals are needed. I shall have to inquire. Now that you've been given the <clears throat> all clear, please make way for Winnie. He walked back to his cab as Winnie grinned. I'll put my faith in my driver, you said, she chuckled. Perhaps your actions should support your words. I hate to see you left to your own devices. She backed away, chortling. Walter followed meekly. The wagon snickered from behind him. He would certainly listen now, though he had to admit he didn't much like the sound of laughter at his expense.